Does your paint on your car look like this, but you want it to look like this? Well, my friends, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to take your crusty, nasty paint and make it brand new again. We are gonna be going through a full wet sand and polish on this here freshly painted Evo 8 to bring it to a showroom, show quality, shine and finish. We painted this car about two months ago and it certainly has its fair share of orange peel, runs and dirt in the paint. Laid out here is everything that we need to get this full cut and buff done. So starting with sanding, my sander of choice is the Baxter from Harbor Freight. We have two sanding blocks, soft foam, bigger one, and then this mini block here. Sandpaper you will need 3M P1500. The purple finishing discs are the best you can get. 2000 grit Merca discs and finishing off with 3000 grit 3M Trizac foam discs. Now for polishers, we have our rotary polisher. I need to upgrade. This here is a Harbor Freight Special. And on the Harbor Freight Special, I run the white 3M foam pad with the white 3M Perfected EXAC compound. Second polisher is our Rupes Bigfoot. And on the roof has Bigfoot for a lighter color car. All we're gonna need is the yellow fine polishing foam pad from Rupes and the Rupes fine polishing compound. You're also gonna need a bit of tape. I prefer the orange tape, some isopropyl alcohol. This is 70%, a big old bag of microfiber towels. You don't need a polishing light, but they're handy to have. And your protectant of choice. Mine, of course, is ceramic coat. And I really, really prefer the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King. I will have all of these goodies linked down below with my discount code from Avalon King. I'm lucky enough to be partnered up with them and uh, it's the best ceramic code I've ever used. So if you wanna save some money and help support the channel, use my code and get your car protected. To start this process off, we need to go through, get all the dirt nibs out of the paint. So denib the paint and get the runs out of the paint. The biggest run on this paint job happened on this rear door, right up in this area here, and it got a little bit saggy right here. So to easily identify the run and to be able to show you guys better, I'm just gonna grab a piece of 1500 grit and lightly sand so you can see the run more clearly. Something like that. And then right down here as well. That made it much more obvious. So here's the smaller of the runs. And here's the big boy. That's a nice run right there. Obviously there's a ton of clear material right here. So I'm gonna start out with scraping the top of the run off with this razor blade that's taped off on the edges. It's gonna cut down our sanding time drastically. And you can see it's just slowly but surely pulling that top ridge off of this run. And you want to tape the edges so the edges aren't digging in to your door. Okay, looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to stop right there on that run and move to wet sanding. There is multiple different ways of removing runs out of your paint job, but this is what I was taught to do, and it seems to work well. You can go more aggressive, but I am going to stick with the most aggressive grit touching this car is gonna be 1500. I know some people start with 1000, but I don't know, I put a little bit of extra love with the sandpaper, so I got this stiff block here. You can use a mixing stick as well to sand out the run, or a block. As soon as this dries off, you'll be able to tell if the run is completely gone because if it's not, there'll be little shiny areas where the low spots are. But if it's all nice and flat, that means your run is gone and it is looking absolutely beautiful. <sighs> okay, that run is completely taken care of. Looks tremendous. I don't think that can look any more flat. Let's move on to this run right here. Same concept, only difference is I am going to tape off the edge, edges of both doors. Because I do not want to burn the edges when I'm sanding. Scrape off the top with the blade. Knock it down with our 1500. And just like that, 
that run as well is taken care of. Last run to take care of are these two right here that came down from the light. So let's pull this light out. Thankfully it's very easy to do. Just push it forward. You can see where it's turning white is only on the run itself. So we're not touching the paint on the sides of it, just the run. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of a polish on this one right here, just to make sure that we did good work. Now, of course, this is not the finished product, but you can very clearly see that the run is completely gone. With all of the runs out of the paint, we're gonna move on to getting all of the dirt out of the paint. Here's what I'm gonna use. I have this mini block right here. I'm gonna wrap my 1500 grit around it and simply wet sand out the dirt. This is very important because if you move on to wet sanding the car with a DA, any of those pieces of dirt get caught in your paper and then it swirls around. It creates what are called pigtails and if you've wet sanded and polished the car before, you know that chasing pigtails can be an absolute nightmare. So a good way to avoid that is get all of the dirt out of the paint before you touch it with a DA. Here's a good example. See that piece of dirt right there? That piece of dirt getting caught in the DA would cause all sorts of pigtails. Couple seconds of sanding, piece of dirt is gone, and we're good to go. Now with all of the dirt removed from the paint, we can go ahead and start wet sanding and polishing. Before I do that, there are a few pieces that I do wanna remove. I'm gonna remove the wing the rear spoiler. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the side mirrors just so we can get underneath nicely flat and polished. Of course, the side markers are gonna come off. And if I wanna get crazy, we could pull off the window moldings and even if we really wanted to get crazy, pull off the door handles as well. If the door handles were easy to remove, I would pull them, but you do have to pull the door panel off and pull the whole entire door apart to get these handles off. So I'll probably leave these guys on. One screw, one wiring connector, and three nuts. Side mirrors are removed. We are ready to move on to the wet sanding process. So we have three different grits here and two different utensils you could say. First up we have the 1500. This whole entire car is going to be flat sanded by hand with this block and 1500 grit. As soon as that is done we're going to move on to the 2000 grit Merca disc on the DA with a soft interface foam pad. That'll go there and then when we're done with 2000 we're going to move to the 3000 grit 3M Tri-Zac disc. So let's get started off with the 1500 and the flat sand by hand. This pillar right here, it's not the smoothest panel in the world. What the block is gonna do with 1500 is knock down all the orange peel. Now technically, we could skip this step, just hit it with the 2000 grit Merca disc and then 3000, and that would give us the factory orange peel look, right? A little bit wavy, but if we want it smooth as glass, which I do, this step is important. There's the area we just sanded. Now we know it's not sanded enough because you can still see some shiny dots or dimples right up in here. Now down here, it's pretty flat. Up here and right here, not sanded quite enough. So we simply just need to sand until it is completely flat, completely dull. Now we have three coats of clear on this car, so I'm not worried about burning through it all. Kind of jumped the gun here. We do need to do a little bit of masking but I was excited to show you guys the flat sand process. The step alone is gonna add about a day, a day's worth of work, but it's gonna be well worth it in the end. Now you see how that whole area right up in here is all flat and dull. We didn't touch over here at all because I need to do a little bit of masking, but that is what you want. Completely flat, no orange peel, no dirt, no runs, no nothing. As flat as could be, and when we go to polish it, it is gonna look as good as possible. 
as flat as glass. I got a little bit carried away. We need to do some masking. So I'm gonna mask off all of these door seals and whatnot. Don't wanna get them scuffed up at all with the sandpaper. Now a good rule of thumb that I go by is one sheet of sandpaper for each panel. So the quarter, a sheet of 1500, door, door, pillar. You get the point. One sheet per panel. Now I do like to stay away from the edges. You can go ahead and tape them off. We'll be taping later with the DA, the edges. By hand, you don't really need to tape them off. You can just stay away from them. I'd rather have a tiny bit of orange peel on the edges of my panels versus no paint, meaning I don't want to burn through, of course. I'm gonna mask off all of the hard body lines because with the DA, you don't want to burn them. So this line right here on the quarter panel comes up on the door like that. And then we got this long body line that runs from the headlight, front fender, all the way to there. And then each of the edges too, they're gonna get masked off. So here's what I ended up with as far as masking goes. Every single edge about an eighth inch in is masked. Tail light, that edge, you guys get the you guys get the gist. All the edges and hard body lines. Now we're gonna go ahead and refine our 1500 grit sand scratch with this 2000 grit Merca disc. Now the point of this Merca pad, this Merca disc, as you guys can see, it's a it's a kind of a foam. Well, it is a foam disc, 2000 grit. If we were to sand this with say a 3M purple 2000 grit clear gets built up on the disc, and then as you're sanding, it'll etch into the paint, causing pigtails. You wanna avoid pigtails. Get these. I know these guys are a bit more expensive, but I promise you they're well worth it. And once again, one disc per panel. <laughs> So this whole entire side is now sanded down with 2000 grit. We can go ahead and pull the tape on all of the edges and we are ready to knock it down to 3000 grit. 3000 grit is such a fine grit that the chances of sanding through on the edge is very, very slim. Is it possible? Anything is possible, but it's highly, highly unlikely. Now I am still gonna leave the taillight taped off, the door handles, the trims and the headlight taped off. With each grit, you usually, a good rule of thumb is double the time. So say if we spent, if we spent five minutes on this fender with the 2000 grit, I'll aim to spend around 10 minutes with the 3000 grit. We really wanna get that sand scratch refined as much as possible before we put a polisher on this paint. Make sure it's nice and clean. This whole entire car is flat sanded down. Now you can tell there's a little bit of shine starting to come back into it with that 3000 grit. But if you zoom in and compare it to, let's say the door handle, she needs a polish. So let's move on to the polishing stage, the fun part. On the trunk here, we have a before and after. This of course being before, sanded down, and this is after. So this is just step one from here to here, step two from here to here. Step three from here to here, not really a big difference on a lighter color car. This would be a, a more of a drastic difference on a dark, like a black, black car. This would be important. On a yellow car, there's no visible difference. Without a light or even shining a detail light on it, there's no visible difference between this and this. So essentially we can cut out one entire step being that it is a lighter colored car. But check out how the camera won't even be able to focus. Hopefully, hopefully it does. Check out how beautiful this paint is gonna look. Once again, no polish to polish. First step to the second step, probably not gonna be all that noticeable on camera, but I can assure you in person, there is a little bit of a difference. So it is worth it for me 
to go ahead and just do a two-step polish on this. Overall, I think this is gonna look absolutely beautiful. To make sure I had the process down properly, I went ahead and completed the entire trunk. So this here's the backside, and this is the top. Smooth as glass. Look at that thing, man. I am going to start out with the roof, and I'll show you guys on the roof the steps I'm taking to achieve this finish. Now we don't wanna be buffing on our seals, so let's go ahead and tape our seals off. Of course, both windshield seal and the sunroof. So the first step is going to be the rotary buffer with a white pad from 3M and the white 3M Perfect It compound. If you buy the 3M kit, this is the first step in the kit. Works really, really well. I was very scared of rotary polishers for the longest time, but they just cut this hand scratches out so much quicker than even the Rupes does that, in my opinion, it's well worth it. Once you get the hang of it, it's not scary. Obviously, do not burn the edges, but uh, let's get to polishing. So on the roof, I'm gonna split it up into, it's gonna be about six different sections. I'll go this half here, that'll be one, and then that will be two, that'll be three, and then the same exact on the opposite side. You don't wanna work too big of a area at once. So I think that's gonna be perfect. My speed on the polisher is gonna be 1500 RPM. So that already looks absolutely beautiful, but I know it can look better. Let's hit it one more time. Okay, that should be good for this front section. Make sure all the edges look good. The entire roof is completed with the first step. And now we're ready for the second step. The second and final step to polishing this beautiful yellow Evo is going to be the Rupes Yellow Compound. The Rupes Yellow, they call it the DA Fine Polishing Pad. On, of course, the Rupes polisher. Now don't forget to blow out your pads. Every two passes is what I do. Something like that. Oh man. Look at that shine, dude. Especially, it's a freaking roof. It's perfect. Absolutely spotless. Now there's two different ways of going about polishing this thing out. We can do the first step on the whole entire car and then come back around to the second step where we can go panel by panel, first step, second step, and then move on to the next panel. What I think I'm gonna do is just finish out each panel completely before moving on to the next panel. And of course I wanted to start off with the roof just so in case the cord hits the car at all, it doesn't scuff the paint or do anything funny like that. Let's get this thing finished up, man. We got a long ways to go. I'm already, it's like day four, but it's well worth it because it's looking fantastic. Man, oh man, I am very excited to pull this thing outside. This whole passenger side is complete. That looks insane. So far we have this side done, the roof is done, and the deck lid is done. I'm gonna move on to the driver's side. This side I'm gonna do the first step on the whole side and then come back with the second step. I think that's gonna be the better move. Let's get it done.
Alrighty, this thing is completely polished up. Every square millimeter of this paint is polished. I'm gonna go ahead and get it fully cleaned up, pull it outside for one last look, and if everything looks good, which I'm confident it will, we can go ahead and get it ceramic coated. My preferred method of getting this thing cleaned up is to fully saturate it in foam first, let it sit for a while, pressure wash it, and then wash it. The foam loosens up all that buffing compound that's gonna be in the cracks and crevices and allows it to pressure wash off easily. All right guys, we got it outside for the first time. This thing, I swear it got about 40 shades brighter with a correct wet sand and polish. Man, oh man, look at this side right here in the sun. Nice thing about yellow is if there were any swirls or anything weird going on, it would be hidden because it's such a bright color, which makes it difficult and easier at the same time, if that makes sense. It's super nice looking down the side of this thing now. Not seeing all that orange peel going on. Flat as could freaking be, man. Sheesh. All right, let's get her back in the shop. I went ahead and pulled off the wheels so we can get these things fully cleaned up and coated as well. But we are ready to go ahead and apply our ceramic coating of choice, the Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King. Ceramic coating is very, very easy. We're gonna start off with this fender. I'll show you how to do it on the fender. I like to go ahead and do two coats on every single car and wheels and brakes and glass and everything. Pretty much today we're gonna to be coating this whole entire car. Like I said, I like to do two coats. I would recommend two kits for a car this size. Last thing you wanna do is run out, pick up two kits. The first thing we need to do is get the car completely cleaned up with some isopropyl alcohol. So grab a brand new microfiber towel. You can either put this in a spray bottle or kind of just saturate your towel like that and go ahead, wipe down the panel. Now there cannot be any sort of water or condensation when you are ceramic coating. So it's been a few hours since I washed this thing, I already went through, blew it off, made sure there's no water that's gonna come out of the cracks or crevices. But first thing is get it cleaned with IPA. We are ready for the coating. Let's go ahead and open this kit up. So included is going to be the ceramic coating itself, the applicator block, hard on one side, soft on the other a new microfiber to wipe the coating off, some gloves, and the applicator pads. So let's grab one applicator pad, go ahead, wrap it around the block like so, open up the ceramic, and apply a few, few drops to get started off onto the applicator. Now you don't wanna just wipe this stuff on by hand, and the reason for that is because then it won't go on evenly. You're gonna have high spots, you're gonna have low spots. So just use the applicator sponge that they provide and do a hexagon or a crisscross pattern. Go up and down like so, and then repeat horizontally. Now we're gonna let this sit on the fender for about three, four minutes, and then grab a microfiber and wipe off the excess. The main reason I like ceramic coat over just a traditional wax is it makes it so much easier to clean and this is a two-year coating, whereas wax only lasts about maybe what, two months. I haven't used wax for a while. Ever since ceramic coating kind of became popularized a few years back, wax kind of went away. Just wipe off all of the excess coating and we are done with this fender. Now, if you want to do two coats, I would recommend waiting a couple hours in between each coat. That's what I've always done and it seemed to work well. The entire car is now coated. We cannot get this thing wet or any sort of water on it at all until the ceramic coating is fully cured, which takes about two days. I like to give it an extra day just to be sure because that was a lot of work. You don't want to mess up your beautiful, perfect finish. So let's move on to the wheels and tires. To get these things initially cleaned up, I'm going to saturate them with some super clean degreaser. Get all this compound off of them, any sort of grease or whatever's on the backside. Grab this nice little Adams soft bristle wheel brush and get them fully cleaned up. Make sure you're using a soft bristle if you have expensive wheels. You don't wanna scuff them up or damage the coating at all. Mm -hmm. 
Same concept as the car. Wipe them down, get them cleaned up with isopropyl alcohol and get them coated. These are in really, really good shape. If they were well used, I'd probably pull out the mini polisher and shine them up, but they're pretty much brand new. So no need for that. Now on wheels with a lot of spokes, I find it easier just to apply the ceramic by hand. If you're doing a set of TEs or something like that, with only a few spokes, you can use the applicator. But ZE40s have way too many spokes to be able to utilize that. That's wild, you can see a clear difference side by side in how glossy and just perfect that wheel looks versus a non-coated one. I hope that comes through on the camera just fine. All four wheels are coated, slapped on a little bit of tire shine. Let's get them on the car. Well, here she is, my friends, in all of her glory, all finished up, nice and clean, and looking better than freaking brand new. Wish it was sunny, but it's not. Look at how flat that paint is. Let's take a trip down memory lane and see how it looked when we started. 